Last month, our Leslie Visser was invited by the U.S. State Department to speak to female journalists, athletes, and entrepreneurs in Uzbekistan about her trailblazing career for the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Leslie shares with us her extraordinary experience. Just 30 years from communism, Uzbekistan has come a long way. Beneath its beautiful facades, there remain strong reminders of its Stalinist past. There is no freedom of the press, and reforms are slow, especially in the area of women's athletics. Here in Uzbekistan, there is much to be done. We are so grateful to have you here in Uzbekistan. What a treat to have a Hall of Fame sportscaster here. We brought you here because we wanted to promote the 50th anniversary of Title IX and to show people in Uzbekistan that anything is possible. For thousands of years, silk has been the culture and the commerce of Uzbekistan. This factory sits on the same land as silk weavers from more than 2,000 years ago. But in modern day Uzbekistan, self-defense classes sponsored by the U.S. Embassy are more valuable than silk for young women, where gender violence and domestic abuse continue to be a serious problem. I was privileged to speak with women, journalists, students, all kinds of women who are yearning for the same opportunities that we have in the United States. I am so excited to be here. It's really a privilege. In the Vergana Valley, part of the ancient Silk Road and the most populous area of Uzbekistan, Women had questions about business, how to pay back loans, or the dilemma of leaving children at home. As a women, sometimes we need to think about our family. How did you manage the work and the life balance yes. in this period of time? In a moment of shared humanity, I told her that we have the same challenges, but that legislation has given us a voice. You should be able to have a dialogue with someone. Is this possible? How could I do it? How do I start? How do I pursue my dream? While the country is leaning more Western, many Uzbek women are caught in the Islamic tradition of being subordinate to their fathers. But there are notable stories of success, like eight-time Olympian Oksana Chusevatina, who's going for her ninth Olympics when she will be nearly 50 years old. The facilities in Uzbekistan are a far cry from the Soviet system she grew up in. When you first came to Uzbekistan, were you shocked at the facilities? Yeah, Oksana acknowledges the facilities have been subpar, but she is determined to compete in Paris in 2024. At every stop, I tried to offer hope and a plan. I had great opportunities, and um, I always say that sports is a passport to the world. Of how in my own career, the credentials said no women allowed, and how my job didn't exist before I started. I encourage them that their passions, their voice, has to outweigh the challenges. I have chills. Not only to be joined by you here in studio, what a powerful feature, um, but you are such a powerful individual who has continued to, to change the world and change culture. And when you think about culture, having immersed yourself uh, in Uzbekistan, how would you describe the area? Um, first of all, it's so great to see you, Sarah, and everybody from We Need to Talk. And, you know, everybody on this show has dealt with international athletes or people who want to be international athletes. But the culture of Uzbekistan, there it's rich historically, but poor economically. This is going to sound shocking. The average yearly household income is $1,300. Wow. Wow. 
They have no, they're a cash only society. They have no credit cards. But um, the young people there have a yearning. Um, as we mentioned, there's no freedom of the press, but they get their information from bloggers. And what the athletes over there learn is that in America, people come from all over the world to play sports here. I mean, you, you've dealt, haven't you, with dozens in yes, the NBA? Yes, absolutely. And do they, are they, is this where they want to come? Well, I, I think this is the place you talk about value. You talk about being able to have opportunity. And I think the one thing that stood out, we were watching your feature in the self-defense classes of these young women and of females. And in the feature, you said even more valuable than silk. And so understanding the economy, to think about that concept. And, and Leslie, what what is and why is there such value for these women to have the ability to be able to protect themselves? Oh yeah, that, no, that, that's a great uh, synopsis of it. It's a patriarchal society. It still has a lot of the leftover Soviet repression and women often are bound to their families, whatever the family decides. And until very recently, domestic abuse was considered a family matter. So there is now a law in the books that if a man is um, determined to have been abusive, he gets a fine for the first offense and that's it. It's amazing to think about, and Leslie, I know you've had a lot of life-changing experiences, but what was your biggest takeaway from, from this one? I felt that um, they were interested in Title IX. They couldn't believe that 37 words could change society. And they also just had an optimism that basically I think they want what we want, you know, or what, I mean, okay, democracy is messy, but I think here we do have opportunity and equality and a chance you know, for freedom from fear. And I mean, you, you know, you know yourself, you've traveled internationally. I think that um, basically travel strips down the barriers and you can really communicate with someone about their wants. Well, Leslie, as always, they were lucky to get to hear your insight and we are lucky to have you in studio and also just for everything that you have done for us. So thank you. Thanks for being a legend. And thank you.